Namaste. Welcome to the 12th session of our course Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. In this session, we are going to discuss the means to surpass the obstacles on the way of attaining well-being. And as the nature of this course is, we are going to examine this question from the yogic perspective. In the last session, we discussed about how our mind works because that is the prerequisite to understand the ways of attaining happiness and experiencing well-being in life. So, we discussed about how mind works, we discussed about the vrittis, the precisely the five vrittis or mind modifications explained in the yogic tradition. We also looked at how these mind modifications can be clished and a clished, can be uh, cause of suffering or may not be cause of suffering. We also looked at what are the major impediments, what are the major obstacles in attaining well-being in the form of different viparyayas. We also discussed uh, six uh, viparyayas or viparyay which are the major obstacles in achieving uh, well-being. Those are avidya, asmita, rag, dvesh and abhinivesh. We discuss the nature of these uh, obstacles and we also try to reflect on our own life as we experience at workplace with our friends or in family, how these uh, viparyas are causing unrest or causing suffering in our life. Today, we are going to discuss how to avoid these clished vrittis. So, Yoga Sutra suggests that precisely two ways are there to avoid the vrittis to get clished or to make mind modification becoming cause of suffering. What are those two things? Those two things are Abhyas and Vairagya. Abhyas, Vairagya, Abhyam, Tan, Nirodha. That can be obstructed, that can be removed. What? Suffering or Klishtavrittis can be removed through Abhyas and Vairagya. Abhyas is practice, constant practice, regular practice, being regular and continuous in our practice that is abhyas and vairagya is non-attachment to things which obstruct in the practice. So, uh, abhyas is the term which is very much applicable and probably all of us can understand if we look at music, sports, studies technology, entrepreneurship, any walks of life, it requires practice. In fact, there are certain professions where professional activity itself is called practice, practice of law or practice of medicine etcetera. So, practice means regularly and continuously working on something. If it is yoga, then in the yoga it is said that there are no holidays. And uh, not that if you have started practicing the yoga, uh, there will be holidays on Sundays or gadget holidays, etc. No, uh, we need to prax practice regularly. Even if on some days we are not able to do the full practice, but some short practice must be conducted, must be performed, and that must be continuously done. So, uh, abhyas is the first thing. And second thing is vairagya. Vairagya means detachment. Vairagya is opposite to rag. You remember rag and dvesh. It is opposite to rag as well as opposite to dvesh. It is about ability to detach from any vishayas, any uh, sensuous pleasure 
or ability to detach from any psychological gratification, any ability to get detached with our asmita, our ability to get detached from our ignorance. Actually, uh, ability to get detached with our set theories and ideas is also part of vairagya. Vairagya meaning I am aware to examine things as they are. Vairagya meaning my purpose in life is well being, integral harmony, career success or maybe samadhi as that is the ultimate objective of yoga. In the process of attaining that objective which is niti sangat and dharma sangat. In order to achieve that objective, if I have to detach from something, if I have to detach from any sensuous pleasure or emotional connect or if I have to get rid of my uh, aversion for certain things but or some people, but if that is required for uh, well being, that is required for the dharmic purpose, I am willing to let go my preconceived notion and attachment. Abhyas and Vairagya can be also defined in terms of extrinsic effort and intrinsic effort. Abhyas is pretty visible outside, you wake up at the right time, you take the right food, you take the appropriate amount of food at appropriate uh, time, you practice regularly, all that is validated externally. So, Abhyas is the practice or effort which is visible externally. Vairagya is more intrinsic situation, Vairagya is more intrinsic effort and when Vairagya happens and when Vairagya happens, external practices start happening naturally, they does not require much of effort. As per the uh, uh, Vyas commentary, we have mentioned about the Vyas Bhashya of the uh, Yoga Sutra. The Vyas commentary says that mind is like river which flows into riverine. Chitta Nadi, that is the term used in the uh, Vyas Bhashya of the Yoga Sutra. And Chitta Nadi, Nadi meaning river, Chitta meaning mind. So, mind is like river which has two dharas, two riverine. One riverine flows in the direction of welfare and that is the true welfare that is samadhi or well-being. Other reverend flows towards suffering. The importance of abhyas and vairag is to direct the chitta nadi, direct the river of this mind towards welfare and well-being. These are the two principles, these two principles are also very well recognized and explained in the Bhagavad Gita by Bhagavan Krishna to the Arjun, when Arjun asks that it is very difficult to control our mind, chanchalam hi manaha Krishna, that is what Arjun says, uh, Bhagavad Gita says, Sri Krishna says that yes, it is correct that manam is chancha, man is chancha. Yes, the mind happens to be by its nature is fluctuating, but it can be controlled through abhyas and vairagya. So, Bhagavad Gita talks also about, uh, Bhagavad Gita also mentions about these two things. But the next question is, how I practice abhyas and vairagya? What is the meaning of abhyas and vairagya in more uh, behavioral terms, more in terms of my emotions, more in terms of my mental states. So, the question is what kind of mental states are required for us to remain established in Abhyas and Vairagya.